going to be making a Salisbury steak today with red wine. Now, in order to start this, I need to roast two heads of garlic a little bit differently than I normally do. What I normally do when I roast garlic is I get a piece of uh, foil, cut off the tops of the heads of the garlic, I put them on there, I sprinkle them with a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper, seal them up and put them in the oven and roast them until they're soft and done. I'm going to do it just a slight bit different today. I'm going to get a small little oven proof dish, whatever kind you have. I'm going to put the garlic in there and then no olive oil, no salt and pepper. I'm going to take a half a cup of beef broth and pour it in there. I'm going to put this on an oven proof tray just in case. I don't want to clean up my oven if I don't have to, in case some of it bubbles over. Seal it up and put it in a 350 degree oven for about one hour until the um, garlic gets soft and then you can squeeze it out. But in order to save some time and through the magic of television I have the garlic that I squeezed out and I saved whatever juice was left in the bottom of that pan and what I'm going to do is take my little mini prep this is just the beginning of the sauce for the Salisbury steak okay I'm put that in there and I'm going to add that broth I just want to make a nice smooth emulsion. little noise. A little bit more. Okay, that's good. Nice little paste. Put that aside for now. Now we'll start the Salisbury steak. Not the steak itself, but one of the garnishes for the steak. And I'm going to get a little fry pan here. And in it, I'm going to put two tablespoons of butter. And then what I did here is I chopped up one large onion into slices. Um, not too thin, but you know, you don't want them too fat either. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to caramelize these in my pan so that they will go in later with the um, Salisbury steak. So I'm going to put those in. And I have close by a half cup of, chick of beef broth, beef stock, excuse me. Try to use stock and not the broth if you can. And what I will do is these are going to take about 10 12 up to 15 minutes to get to the point that I want them nice and soft and brown. And periodically I'm going to add a little bit of the broth, not only to give them color, but more flavor and they will just soak up all that beef broth. So this is going to take, like I said, 12 to 15 minutes. I'll come back and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. Our onions are coming along wonderfully. They're almost ready to come out. In the meantime, I've got about one pound, just slightly over, of 80% lean ground beef. Um, you can use a leaner ground beef if you want to, um, but keep in mind, the leaner it gets, the drier it's going to be. So I like mine just a little bit with 20% fat. To that, I'm gonna add some salt, teaspoon, I tend to undersalt my food and some pepper. You can salt it at the table or you can increase the salt if you wish. I'm just going to get in there with my hands and just mix it up. I'm not adding anything like onion or bread or crumbs or anything to this. Nothing. Just the ground beef and the salt and the pepper. Okay. Now. Uh, Gather this all together, and now divide it in half. I'm making this meal just for two people. You can increase that if you want to. If you did, you probably want to double up the sauce. 
so it's about half. Now, I don't know about you, but it's not Salisbury steak unless it's sort of shaped in an oblong. It's not a hamburger. It's got to be that oval, the way mom used to make it. Okay, and the trick here is just try to keep it as the thickness. And then I like to make a little indent right in the middle, a big indent with my thumb. And that, because sometimes when you make any kind of burger, you get that dome in the middle and the edges cook really fast and then the very middle is bloody. It's not done. So that little indent helps it along. So again, another mother's oval. I got one that's bigger than the other, but that's okay. All right, we got those done. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna crank up my heat and I'm going to take this off. That beeping you hear is just this stovetop unit. When you take the pan off, it beeps. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more butter. Set those onions aside. And now I'm gonna put our steaks on there. And the goal here is just to get them brown on both sides. I'm not cooking them through at this point. You'll see how we finish them off later. So this is going to take about four, maybe five minutes per side. All right, our Salisbury steaks are browned on both sides. I'm going to remove them. Okay, and put them off to the side for the moment. And I'm going to take out some of the fat out of this pan. I don't want to take it all out, but a lot of it. We don't need that excess fat. Okay, and to the pan, I'm going to add two tablespoons of flour. With my little whisk, whisk it into the remaining liquid in the pan. Okay. Now I've got half a cup of a dry red wine. I'm going to add it all. I'm getting all any brown stuff that's accumulated on the bottom of the sides, that nice brown, what the French call fond, F-O-N-D, which is nothing more than that brown stuff on the bottom of your pan. But that's where a lot of flavor is. I'll turn this heat down low for a minute. Okay, now I have one and a half cups of beef broth, and I've got that paste that we made with the half a cup of beef broth and the um, garlic cloves, which I'm going to add in there right now. That stuff is so good. If you've never had roasted garlic, just experiment and, and make some because it gets so sweet and so delicious. It's great just squeezing it right out of the uh, garlic head and just putting it on toast, like good French toast. Mm. a baguette slice. Adding some of the broth slowly. I'm going to get this higher. Smell of the beef broth, the garlic, the wine. It's really, really delicious. Okay, now I still have those onions. I haven't forgotten about the onions that we made in the beginning. Don't worry. We're gonna add those in, in time. Right now, I wanna bring this to a boil and I want it to boil for a few minutes until it boils down a little bit and thickens. So that could take three or four minutes, maybe five or six. 
We'll see. Our sauce is reduced nicely. I can smell all that beef broth, that garlic, the wine, and it's the garlic is really wonderful. So now, oh, I'm gonna put in about a half a teaspoon of dried thyme. If you have fresh thyme, you could put that in, that'd be really nice. And now I'm going to add back our Salisbury steaks. And these are going to sort of, I guess, poach in this liquid for, oh, I don't know, about five minutes, just until they're done all the way through. I'm adding back all those onions and the juices from the onions, so delish. I will cook these about three minutes on this side, turn them over, cook them, three minutes on that side, and then we'll plate. Here's our Salisbury steak all done. The garlic, the wine, the beef broth gravy, the nice onions. I've paired it with rice and tomatoes from our garden. You can put mashed potatoes, noodles, whatever you like. This is a really good go-to recipe.